back in the reloading layer with the Smith & Wesson 629 competitor from the Performance Center. Welcome range fans, Mr. Revolver Guy here with dayattherange.com. So guys, before we start talking about this beautiful revolver, let's do the customary safety check to make sure this thing's safe to talk about. There you have it, pretty easy on a revolver, right? Pop out the cylinder, nothing ejects, we know this thing's now safe to talk about. So we're gonna go through a quick normal tabletop review because I wanna get out to the range and put some rounds down range with Big E from the Reloaders Network who sent me these beautiful Ford Blue 245 grain Keith pills that we're gonna put through the revolver and see what the chronograph readings are because I have it loaded on top of some 2400 um, and we're gonna see how this thing performs on target and across chronograph today out of this beautiful 629. Now this 629 to some might be an odd looking piece for the profile of the barrel, but this competitor, folks, this competitor here is from the days of old, um, a PPC competition. Plenty of information out there about PPC competition. Go out there, Google, look it up, see what it's all about. It is a pretty fun competition to be involved with. But this revolver was designed around the PPC competition. Interesting enough, PPC is a very popular in Europe, but not so popular here in the United States any longer. Now, having said that, this thing has a dovetail front sight, partridge front sight, or Patridge front sight uh, that's beautiful. Um, no machine marks, just that's one thing about this entire revolver. I've looked this thing over just to have something to complain about. And uh, I've looked it over and no machine marks, just, just, just refined with the best of revolvers. What also makes this barrel very interesting is the weight out front. This weight out front causes you to be able to hang that pistol out there. That's one-handed, folks. By the way, this thing is 57.9 ounces, according to my scale, with the aluminum weights in there. What that weight is for is so that you can hang it right out there on target and have very little movement. We're going to see how well I can do on target today. But having said that, if you don't have the arm strength or hand strength to hang it out there like I do, or for those that may be uh, a little bit smaller in stature, there are some um, nylon weights where you can mix and match the nylon weights in here with the aluminum weights that go in here with one caveat. The weight on the end has to be there. So if you can see there, that weight there on the end, if I can get it to focus, uh, that weight there on the end is countersunk. So that one aluminum weight should always be there on the end because it's countersunk for the screw to go, up, go down in there. This thing comes with all the tools that you need to change the weights out and also even something I haven't seen before, a special little screwdriver to even adjust the rear sight. But before we move on to the rear sight, one last thing about this barrel profile, Smith & Wesson. Somebody answer me this, please. Why did Smith & Wesson on the 44 Magnum come up with their own style of Picatinny rail? That's right, folks. It is proprietary. This is a proprietary Picatinny rail system. I would have loved to have had more rails there for greater adjustability. It's not impossible to mount a scope. Absolutely, you can mount a scope there. And they only do this on the 44 Magnum version. On the 357 Magnum version of, this, of the competitor revolver, they've put a true Picatinny style rail on there. Uh, so, so that alone in and of itself, I take away about a half of a star for just this proprietary rail system that it has on top. Again, you can mount an optic, you can mount a scope, you can mount a red dot on the front of this thing, but it, it makes it a little odd and a little awkward when it's, it's not in standard with everybody else's. Uh, now moving back, Moving back to the frame, beefy end frame. And on top of this beefy end frame is the LPA rear sight. This rear sight is serrated in the back to knock down glare from any sun. It's also adjustable for height and windage. 
finely tuned adjustable with marks that you can see from a click perspective where you will end up on the target. I just think one of the best rear sights I have ever seen on a revolver. And moving back to the hammer, you have the traditional hammer from Smith & Wesson, where it is the teardrop style hammer. Moving down the frame, you've got the wide trigger on the frame. Uh, and for this trigger, you do have a trigger stop. So that avoids much over travel. And I will tell you, by the way, this trigger <laughs> is something nice. Folks, on the RCBS trigger gauge, this thing comes out to be eight pounds double action. That is absolutely correct. Eight pounds double action on this Smith & Wesson 629 competitor. Really doesn't feel like eight pounds. I've always found that on the wider triggers, it just makes it so much easier to pull for some reason. But anyways, enough on the trigger. We're gonna move down the frame to the grips. Now, I got a little secret about taming recoil for the 629. The 629 in frame and the Smith & Wesson 500 X frame share the exact same profile of grips. That's right. You can take the Hogue grip off of an X frame, the Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum or 460 and put it right on here. What does that give you? It gives, it covers this back strap. Uh, the grip that I'm talking about, you can go out on Smith & Wesson's website and you can order them separate. You don't have to get a revolver to get the grip. But um, yeah, you can order them separate. You can slide them right on top. And what it does is give you cushion and there is a gel pad in it. It gives you cushion over this metal back strap. For me, uh, I'm gonna leave this one as is and see how it shoots on the range. Now, I wanna reserve all rights to change it if I have to in the future when I get out on the range again with these big E 245 grain freedom pills. So I will tell you, that's uh, pretty much it about this revolver. A nice, nice revolver from Smith & Wesson, the 629 competitor. We're now going to head out to the range, put some on target, and across the chronograph. Let's head out. From the reloading layer to the pistol range, with the venerable, and arguably, according to dayattherange.com, the most versatile caliber in history, the 44 Magnum. Let's put some of these four blues down range across the chronograph and see how she does. Range fans of Reloaders Network, is that vicious or what? Look at that. Beautiful. Let's get them across the chronograph. We're down range about seven yards. We're going to put them across the chronograph and get you the velocities and also the accuracy on camera. We'll see if we can ring out any accuracy at seven to 10 yards, double action. What a trigger. Woo! 245 grainers, 1328. I gotta tell you, feels like nothing in this revolver. I'm cheating a little bit though, cause I have these nice mechanic gloves on. Thanks to my daughter. Man, this thing is barking. I believe that's six and <laughs> not bad accuracy. Check it out. Easy ejection, folks. Biggie, that's all you, brother. All you over on the Reloaders Network. Man, now I tell you what, if you don't get excited about firing a big bore 44 Magnum, especially from the Performance Center, 245 grainers at 1350, 1400 feet per second, Woo! You need to pinch yourself and wake up, folks. Let's put another round through this thing and see how she does. Let's review, folks. 1435, 1363. Ooh, big spread. 
1326, 1338, 1332, 1328. Wow, those first five shots were awesome. That last shot, what happened there? A high of 1435, a low of 1326, an average of 1353. Extreme spread 109 because of that last shot. And a standard deviation of 42. I tell you what, folks, I'm still pretty excited because you got to take a look at that target. Let's take a look at it. Check it out. Look at that target. Woo! All right, Big E, Ford Blue, 245 grainers on top of some 2400 powder. Let's get six more. All right, folks, I'm back 15 yards now. We're gonna test accuracy at 15 yards. I still have the chronograph set up down range and I'll give you those numbers and see what they look like from 15 yards out. Then we'll go a little bit further back at 20 yards and maybe shoot from the branch and rest, see what kind of accuracy I can get. Woohoo, Big E, a caretaker of Marines. For those of you who wants to know who Big E is and why I call him the caretaker of Marines, go see my mail package or my mail call over at dayattherange.com or the Reloaders Network. He's on the Discord over on the Reloaders Network. What a wonderful guy. And these cast bullets, I'm telling you, they are the truth. Thanks, brother. Ah, uh, single action. Hit hard. Oh no, not rain. This revolver just hangs out there. Oh yeah, nice grouping. Last one, double action. <laughs> oh man, that is pretty awesome. Folks, looks like rain's gonna come down on me, but I might try to wait it out, see if I can shoot from 20 yards from the bench and see what kind of accuracy we can ring out of this old Smith & Wesson 629 competitor. You saw the numbers? Man, great accuracy. This would be one serious critter getter for those four-legged hogs. And you can use this old competitor to compete, bowling pin, PPC, whatever your heart desires. I tell you what, very refined. Let's get out of this rain and see if we can wait it out. Be right back. What we got here from 15 yards, 1324, 1294, 1284, 1333, 1300, 1247, a high of 1333, a low of 1247, average 1297, extreme spread of 86, a standard deviation of 30. Wow. Impressive from 15 yards. Let's take a look at the old camera. I'm sorry, let's take a look at the old target. See if we can get out of here before this rain comes. That's it from 15 yards, folks. I tell you what, that Smith & Wesson competitor sure is accurate. Maybe the rain will stop for us and uh, we can get some from the bench and from the old multi-caliber ransom rest. Let's stay tuned and see what happens. All right, fellas, I'm rushing it here, trying to get it in between the rain showers. Uh, we've got the multi-caliber ransom rest out. You guys have seen a video. I'll leave a link in the description down below. You guys have seen a video on this very diverse rest, very well built, all here in the great US of A. They have now put a padded 
V-block on top to everyone's request. And I really have been dying to get out and shoot with this thing, especially with revolver, just to see how the leather holds up to the barrel cylinder gap blast that often gets um, sprayed out from 44 Magnums, 357 Magnum rounds out front and out to the side. I've put six, seven shots through it so far, holding up pretty good. Uh, after these six shots, we're gonna call it 12 shots, and I'll show you a little bit of how the pad is holding up. But let's see what the accuracy looks like with the Smith & Wesson Competitor, 245 grain coated Ford Blue Big E Freedom Pills loaded on top of 2400. Woo! So what can we do here, fellas? What can we do? What can we do? Where did that one go? Not even on the target. That's interesting. Oh, I see the other one. It's high and left. That was dead center. Shooting a little left today. Wow, shooting way left today. I think that's five, this will be six. Man, I tell you what, I think I can ring out some more accuracy. I haven't used the uh, ransom rest all that much, but I'm not gonna make excuses. It's not too bad. But you know what? I may even get some standing long range. I have some more four blue freedom pills here. Let's get up a clear target and do standing and see what I can do with this old competitor. Be right back. This is what 12 rounds of Magnum looks like through the Ransom International padded V-block. No harm, no damage. I bet this thing will last forever. All right, Biggie, let's see what I can do standing from 25 yards. All right, Reloaders Network and Range fans, I got six of these Freedom Pills, these four blue from Big E. Man, I'm, I'm just so excited and I, I apologize for the excitement, folks. I'm just so excited. Big Boar really gets me excited. And then to have a mail call go this well, it's, it's just fantastic. I'm gonna give my hand at 20 yards and uh, see what we can do on a five inch target down range. Oh, let's see here, here we go. Shooting high. Shoot low. Still would ring bell. If it was a five inch steel, still would ring it. Still feel comfortable for hog. Oh yeah. And last one. Five inches on a five inch target. I still would have ring some steel down range. Guys, I got to tell you, let's go down range, see what the target looks like. I need more practice with this thing. And plus, I think I'm pretty hyped up. I have snuck and had a, a, a drink of a pop today, some Coke that my wife doesn't know about, but she'll find out after this video, I guess. But uh, let's get down range and see what the old target looks like. All right. That's from the 25 yards. 
and I would have rang steel on a 5.5 inch plate at 20 yards, what, four times out of five? No, I've got to get five rounds on. Let's try this one more time, one more time. All right, folks, I swear, I swear, I'm gonna cut this video short. I've got six more rounds at 20 yards. We're gonna to try to put on, put all six on a 5.5 inch target. Let's see if I can pull this off. Be rooting for me now. Oh! Man, stringing them and had one totally off target. Oh well. Well, I tell you, that's all I have, Big E, of the uh, 245 grain blue pills. That's because I did leave 12 at home. I knew I would get excited. I'm gonna see exactly what will one of those hard cast Ford blue bullets do and ballistics gel. The ballistics gel is being prepared right now at home by the lovely Miss Leo 45. I thank her for that. And uh, come join me. Come join me over at dayattherange.com and also over on the Reloaders Network. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that little bell down below so that you know when I post new videos like this one. I do have to say I'm pretty impressed with the old Smith & Wesson 629 competitor from the Performance Center. And you know what? Frankly, I should be. With the reputation of the Performance Center, I don't know that it gets any better. You guys have seen a lot of the Taurus video, uh, and I will say, wow, between those two 44 Magnums, along with that Cimarron Bad Boy 44 Magnum that I had a chance to review, whoo, this big boy is getting deep down in my bones. Hey, Range fans, Reloaders Network, Thanks for the support. Mr. Revolver Guy, signing out.